And then when he inhales, that's on the exhalation. On the inhalation, he breathes them, sucks them all back in again. But he's breathing them in and out. Each universe has an infinity of galaxies in it. And then he breathes them back in. And this takes place over a time span of billions and billions and billions of years. And each cycle is untold billions and billions of years long. So from the Vedic conception, um, that thought is not strange at all. But for our Western mind, it is very strange. You find that some of these other philosophical traditions around the world probably have a closer conception to the way reality really works than we do. The Jains, for example, uh, who are a small religious group in, in South Asia, uh, have a much different conception of reality in the universe and the age of the cosmos than we do. The Hindus do as well. And uh, some of the Native American uh, cosmologies and on and on. Our Western European mindset is, is a rather recent um, development in human history and one of the more bizarre mindsets and probably not as close to the objective reality of the universe as some of these much older philosophies. You quote the authors of Forbidden Archaeology, The Hidden History of the Human Race by Michael Cremo and Richard Thompson. This must be a valuable book to you. Well, it is. And in fact, not only to me, but to many others, this book has been translated into dozens of languages. You say 57 languages. That's pretty that, profound. That's right. And maybe even more in the last year or two. But uh, I don't know how many people have read it, probably millions of people all around the world. It is one of the most influential books of, of the late 20th century, early 21st century, because it challenges the prevailing intellectual paradigm that has come out of Western Europe and North America over the last century or century and a half and stood that paradigm on its ear. It is directly... Um, cited evidence again and again. The original unabridged version of this book ran to something like 900 pages, extremely thickly documented and footnoted. Essentially, what these guys did, um, uh, uh, Michael Cremer and Richard Thompson, was to go through the archaeological, anthrop physical, anthropological, and historical literature with a fine-toothed comb for the past 200 years or so, and pull out all the anomalous papers, articles, research findings, and discoveries that challenge the mainstream historical, physical, anthropological, and archaeological paradigm. And they discovered, using evidence that mainstream archaeologists, anthropologists, and historians have discarded, but never left evidence that they pulled out of their own mainstream documentation. They have proven that modern men, that is, modern, uh, anatomically modern Homo sapiens, have been on this planet far longer than we are taught when we go away to school and to the university, going back millions of years. And in fact, um, this is a view that accords with the Vedic literature, the Sanskrit literature that's thousands of years old from South Asia. And I was first in, uh, enlightened to this information when I was doing my first master's degree back in the 1980s. I encountered a Hindu monk, a brahmacharya, who um, was conversant with some of this literature. And I was having a discussion with him at the time, and he was talking to me about Lord Rama, who was an ancient Indian king a long, long time ago. And as he talked to me about Lord Rama and his exploits, uh, he was a very great ruler in ancient Indian history. This is Lord Rama of the Ramayana, correct? That's, that's correct. Okay, very and um, he, he was talking to me, and as he was talking to me about what he had done, I assumed that he was talking about a man who maybe lived three or four or 5,000 years ago contemporary with ancient Egypt or ancient Babylon or ancient Sumeria. But as he talked, I began to realize, no, he's going back farther than that. So then I asked him, when did Lord Rama live? And he said, well, no one knows exactly, but maybe anywhere from half a million to two million years ago. 
And I was floored. This was a man who was at that time uh, completing a PhD in chemistry, an extremely bright, well-educated, Western-educated Indian man. And I thought, surely you can't be serious. So I said, you know, uh, you, you, can't, you can't mean that. And he said, oh, I do. You see, we in India have the real history of the world. What you guys have is just fantasy. It's nothing. It's just made up. How is that possible? How come Indian scholars haven't freaked out and gone to the news or television, radio, or blogs and said something? Well, you have to understand there's a very different culture in India than there is here, and that's why you have a huge culture clash between, say, um, haven't you noticed we're fighting wars uh, against Pakistan and Afghanistan and we're ready to go to war against Iran. Their culture over there is extremely, uh, extremely ancient. And yes, no, I actually spent a month in India. And as a matter of fact, I was arrested at the Taj Mahal. <laughs> yeah. But then I was released. That is actually a comedy story. But India is so different from Pakistan, though. Seriously. Well, it, it is. And it's, it's different from Afghanistan as well. But what you'll find is, of course, there are Indians. If, if you're talking about the Indian upper class, the middle class, many of them are thoroughly westernized and would have degrees from Western universities universities in the United States, in England, uh, in, in Australia, Canada, places like that. So many of the upper class in India have accepted uh, the Western conception of history because they have made common calls with um, Western pol politics and the Western economic order. I'm talking about a culture in India that goes much deeper and that is much more ancient. Um, and it's it's been there for a long, long time. Uh, have you ever heard of the Battle of Kurukshetra? No. Well, you see, that's something that is part of Indian culture, but is, is virtually undiscussed in the West. I mean, I didn't hear about it uh, until I began talking to Hindus when I was in my early 30s. I was never taught about it in school, but the Battle of Kurukshetra lasted 17 days. And um, traditional Indian lore uh, holds that something on the order of over 600 million people were killed during the Battle of Kurukshetra. And you have to understand that in ancient Vedic times, they had technology that's very similar to what we have today. They had uh, things that would be analogous to our stealth fighter bomber technology, to fighter jets, uh, to helicopters, to dirigibles, to ballistic missiles, uh, to on and on, to um, e even to uh, lasers and things like this. They had a technically advanced civilization many, many thousands of, of years ago, and this becomes clear when you read the Vedas. Uh, I've read some of them in English translation. And uh, even in the Ramayana, uh, Ramayana for example, uh, there are many references to st sky cars and vimanas and celestial chariots and so forth, and celestial beings. So you can see that many years ago, a long, long time ago, in remote antiquity, there was also a highly sophisticated technological civilization on this planet. And we are simply not told about that in our schooling. And that's why I mean by Earth's insidiously hidden history. We go away to school and we are taught... Well, you know, there was the Stone Age, which just lasted tens or hundreds of thousands of years. And before that, people were basically like monkeys. And then they evolved into modern man. And then for, you know, hundreds of thousands of years, 100, 200, 300,000 years, they lived in caves and wore skins and uh, used bows and arrows and clubs and that kind of thing until they be suddenly became more civilized for some unexplained reason about 5,000 years ago and abruptly moved from uh, using clubs to building pyramids, uh, by the way, that our engineering, engineering firms could not build today. So it's never explained to us how people went within ostensibly just a few generations from living in caves to building pyramids that we can't build today. Our technology today could not reproduce the Great Pyramid in Egypt, for example. Uh, so explain that from our prehistory. And by the way, the medieval Arab chroniclers um, had 